I am about to do the worst thing possibly that you can ever do to your rifle on this very beautiful, very expensive custom build. Coming up next on GV Guns. So if you're a fan of firearms or automobiles and you have internet access, obviously you've got to have all of that to be watching this video. You know that one of the perhaps riskiest things you can ever do is look for advice online. That's what's about to happen with this thing. We have a very expensive, uh, long-term, slow build, personal project. Uh, started off with uh, a Black Friday purchase of in the raw upper and lower receivers at a price I could not refuse and I figured, why not? Let's, let's start a fancy gun build. Slowly over the course of six months or so, I collected the components for this thing, then uh, had it Cerakoted, and a very confident gunsmith assembled the upper. I know the gas port is perfectly lined up. I saw through the scope myself. Uh, everything done right, and I ended up with a pretty and expensive paperweight. <laughs> this gun doesn't run. I'm gonna show you what I've got, what I think it is, and ask you what you think it is. I'm sure we're gonna get all kinds of answers here. This might be opening a can of worms, but really at this point I am frustrated beyond belief. Quick rundown of the gun and its build, then we'll get into the specifics. Give you a look here. We have a carbine length buffer system in a uh, PWS tube. Got a lightweight carrier, cutout receivers, which obviously aren't lightweight. Uh, don't let anybody fool you. These uh, lightning cuts are style cuts. In order to make the receivers strong enough, they end up being thicker, and then, well, it's not very light at all. With our F1 firearms, we have an 18 inch with a rifle length gas system. I went with that, wanting a little bit of weight savings, keeping it 18, but a super soft shooter. Went with a Patriot Ordnance Factory Dictator adjustable gas block and a handguard that ends just in time to keep that easy to get to. And a very cool, I believe this is a Vendetta Precision Titanium brake on the end, keeping things light out front. Lightweight carrier and a lightweight buffer. The gun doesn't run. It cycles just fine by hand, maybe a little stiff. What ends up happening when I shoot is essentially a short stroke. It'll fire and maybe eject, maybe not. Every once in a while I can get two shots out of it, but nothing beyond that. What that tells me is not enough gas. All right, so I knew that this was a risk, going with an 18 inch barrel and a rifle length gas system. The reason why it's a risk is just as the gas gets to the port and starts to build pressure, and push rearward, all that pressure drops because the bullet's out of the barrel. So there's a very short dwell time, if you will, for the gas to head through there. So I opened this thing all the way up, went as, <laughs> well, I'm into the extreme, it, it can't get any more open, and it's not pushing back hard enough to cycle this lightweight carrier and the lightweight buffer. I'll pop them out, I'm gonna have to grab punches because this F1 firearms setup is so tight that, uh, well, the takedown pins don't really take down unless you have some help. Speaking of these pins, uh, I believe these were Fortis. These are, have an interesting design in them that you insert the pin at an angle and then twist. The idea being that you don't have to fight with keeping the spring suppressed and all that. Uh, I don't recommend them after doing this build, especially with an F1 kit. So many things are proprietary in this F1 kit, uh, as in the spring comes up from the bottom instead of in from the back and all kinds of things like that. It did not go well with this kit, and you end up doing that over and over again. I just pulled that pin all the way out, which means the detent has disappeared, and the spring could easily be lost too. I don't see the detent at this moment. Wonderful show you how lightweight I went. Got an Odinworks adjustable buffer, thinking that this was going to be my solution. This is their lightweight adjustable buffer, and 
it's empty. It weighs just over an ounce. <laughs> I went as light as possible and it's still short stroking. The carrier, I forget who made this, some fancy carrier I saw on uh, Coda Boy's channel. Thought it looked cool, thought I'd give it a try. You know, it's got all kinds of these improvement cuts to clear debris, but minimize friction, all that kind of stuff. Doesn't weigh a thing. I mean, it. it I swear this thing's got to be made out of aluminum, the, the carrier itself. The bolt is still standard mil spec, but uh, super lightweight components and short strokes. I considered getting some footage of this for you all to see, but really it's pretty anticlimactic. I shoot, you get maybe half a stroke, and that's it. So if I've got the gas port all the way open, I've got a lightweight carrier, I've got the lightest buffer possible, where am I going wrong? Where could the extra friction be? Everything fits smoothly. The upper is assembled correctly. We could be running into possibly friction coming over this rise armament hammer, but it's a pretty angled, and it, that's a nice path. So I don't think that this spring is putting too much resistance to move the uh, carrier back and forth. I, I don't get it. I mean, the, the upper and lower fit so tightly, especially after Cerakote, that you pretty much have to pound it all together to get the pins in, and then nothing's moving. And uh, in manually cycling it, didn't see, hear, or feel any friction, so it's not like this is slightly out of alignment and whacking the tube. In fact, the PWS tube has a nice extension there to help provide support and reduce carrier tilt. We don't see any excessive wear in there. What's doing it? I'm at a loss, guys. I would love to hear your thoughts. Frustrated that I've just lost the detent in showing you these things. Yeah, so the idea behind this is you insert the pin in there, put it in, pull forward, twist, and then it finds its home in here. But uh, the system does not work well. It's, I think, an example of stacking tolerances, stacking the wrong way, and what happens when nothing is mil-spec is you lose compatibility. But uh, I'm in this quite a bit of, quite a bit of dough. Might be this, this spring is too tough. I don't know, other, I assume there's lighter weight springs out there. One thing I thought about doing was going from a carbine buffer system to a rifle length buffer system to uh, have a spring that is softer per inch and maybe give it a little more room. Uh, but man, I tell you what, I, I intended on having something that could shoot 5.56, five, maybe even 2.23 and just be stupidly soft. I've shot factory guns that are like that. Thought it'd be fun to build one. It did not happen. Let me know what uh, your thoughts are, where you think I went wrong with this build setup. If you've experienced anything like this, I'm sure the comment section is going to go wild. Thanks for watching.